welcome to my Tokyo apartment tour. My name is Ro and I have been living here for three years with my husband Yusuke. Our apartment is located in Tachikawa which is about 26 minutes give or take from Shinjuku station on the Chuo line but also I have the opportunity of being easily able to go to places like uh, Okutama or Mount Takao too. So I think for many people wanting to move to Tokyo, Tachikawa seems quite far from anything else but actually I find it to be a really convenient station to live at. You have the Chuosen but you also have the Nambu line running out to Kawasaki which you can change at Noborito to get into Kanagawa. So I think it is a really good spot for anyone looking to move to Tokyo to live in because you can access so many different areas of West Tokyo. The prices are much cheaper because you're not living in central Tokyo, but it really depends on your priority of where you want to live. Do you want to live in central Tokyo or do you want a kind of more suburban experience? So for me, coming from Australia, I really need nature around me. I really love nature, but I do also love the city, like being in Melbourne city. But it's a very convenient city to um, live in. There are many, many department stores and many things to do. There is um, a new complex called Green Springs that opened up recently. And then there is the enormous Showa Kinnan Park. So for me, it has all of the things that I might enjoy doing on the weekend and my job is here too. My husband Yusuke is a skateboarder so there is a skate park here which he requested we live near so all in all we are very happy here. So let's get down to the nitty-gritty. We are English teachers but we're not in the JET program or anything like that so we found our apartment completely independently online. My husband is Japanese obviously so it was very easy for us to navigate that process and actually since we moved to Tokyo we came and looked at the apartment on the second day and I think we had been accepted for the apartment maybe on the third or fourth day after moving here. So our apartment is 52 square meters and honestly I don't know what that means. <laughs> I think that personally it is a really generously sized apartment for a couple to live in and the previous tenants were even two students so you could live independently within this apartment too. And for the price that we pay, which is 78,000 yen or just around 800 Australian dollars per month, give or take, I think that's a really good price for the convenience of the location and the size of the apartment. Personally, I think the main feature of this apartment is the balcony. Um, actually, there are two, which I will show you in another video because today there are typhoons. Last week when I was filming, there was typhoons. So it's really not a good time for filming outside at the moment. So please look forward to that in a separate video. But for now, let's enjoy the apartment tour. If you have any further questions, please feel free to ask and I'll do a follow up video for you. So we have a really small entrance way. This is where we're keeping a lot of our um, masks. I have some more masks over here, pandemic life. And at the moment it's coming into autumn. So I've done a little autumn set up here. I've even got a dead dragonfly that I found outside on the ground. How delightful. And my husband is an avid skateboarder, so he has so many skateboards lying around the house. So we'll take our shoes off here, and then actually I'm wearing slippers today. It's not that cold, but I just like to wear slippers inside the house. And then I put in these extra racks up here. And Japan has um, some great design. These are like magnetic umbrella racks. Um, so I keep my umbrella inside and it collects the water in the little pocket down the bottom. And I also collect many gachapon and here's an amabi, which is for um, warding off coronavirus actually. This one's like summer sound. Oh, it's still going. <laughs> I forgot how long it is. And this one is exactly the same as what you would see on a Japanese bus. So it's really cute. Let me off the bus. 
Also in my mask section, I have some mints in case I'm running out the door and, you know, breath. Um, I love this artist's design. They've done several different tins and she has on a little mask and I just felt like it was so timely and something to remember this weird phase of our life by. And I'd love to take you outside today, but I think I'm going to leave that for another day because the wind is just outrageous. I'm sure there's a more elegant way of storing a vacuum, probably in a cupboard, but we just don't have any storage space really and we use it every day. So storing it away wouldn't really be very functional for us. And then we have in here the toilet. We are very fortunate to have a electronic toilet um, with the bidet function. Personally, I don't use it at all, <laughs> but I do like the warm seat in the winter. That is a real um, game changer for me. The space inside the toilet is so small, thanks Japan. <laughs> I know it's space saving, but can be a little bit claustrophobic sometimes. So I'm really happy that we have this little window here. I have an Adalia Retro. Um, towel. I love all this stuff. You'll probably see me mention them a thousand times in my videos. And then I just have some little masks. And this is actually my New Year's wreath that I made, but it was too pretty to just get rid of. So I put it in here because I thought it's cute. So the living area is a pretty great space, so we can fit quite a large table in here even though there's only two of us. I think the intention when we first moved in was that people would be coming to visit us. Um, unfortunately the pandemic had other ideas, but it is a really nice place to kind of host dinners and things like that. I've had um, like a New Year's lunch, which was really nice, and soon I'm going to have a Halloween kind of uh, autumn lunch which will be really nice so that'll all happen here but what is really great and also strange is this room here it has sliding doors so we can close it off from the living room if we wanted to which is also a really great way of keeping any of the heat inside in the winter we use this little heater and um, actually this is where our tv usually goes so this is like a little movie viewing area but it's also acting as a storage space and of course our like walk-in wardrobe in a way also this is all my stuff, <laughs> gasp, um, and this is Yusuke's stuff, so tiny in comparison, but thank you for the space, Yusuke. Um, we have a little photo wall, and this is a bunch of stuff that I'm collecting for my store, Kinos. Um, this little guy, if you've been distracted by him, is a seal. Now, why do you have a seal hanging from the roof, Rocham? Well. Here is the ceiling light, and when you pull it, you can change the level of intensity. Now, we often watch movies and things in here. We're lying on the floor, so this string isn't really long enough. But when you pull it, the little seal chases the fish, and the ball goes closer and closer towards the ground. Basically, we got it at Daiso, and I thought it was just a really cute gimmick. So, of course, naturally, like half of the other stuff I've collected, uh, I thought it was cute and I bought it home. Coming off this room to the right and in between this room and the Genkan is our bedroom. So for the sake of this video, please imagine that there is beautiful shade and plants outside here. The space is really big in my opinion. We actually couldn't fit a double bed through the front door. So we have two singles and then we've like tied them together, which is a little bit chaotic, but you can buy in Japan a bed bridge, which is like a foam thing that you put basically in between the beds and it's like a T, so it has like a topper and you really can't feel too much of the middle of the bed, which is nice. But yeah, would have loved to have gotten like a queen bed, but we couldn't fit it in, in the, through the tiny door here. So yeah, this was our solution. We got them from Muji. And we have a really nice floor length mirror here. Hello. I love lots and lots of pillows. Yusuke does not. He throws them off in the middle of the night. 
but you know I think it looks really cozy and comfy and I've always been like a pillows and blankets and cups and coziness kind of person so he just has to deal with that now um, I have some artwork but it's really difficult to hang prints in a rental in Japan it really depends on the property but um, in the case of our one we have this wallpaper which they will replace when we move out so I'm just using some pins to kind of hold everything in place then over here I have what I guess is a desk at the time of purchase Ikea was sold out of all of their desks because of the pandemic everyone was working from home so this is actually just a shelf kind of repurposed as a desk it's not really a desk but I like that it's kind of flexible in that way that if I moved into another place it could be used as a shelf I could buy more of these horizontal shelves um, so I like the flexibility of that and because of summer this is our only good air conditioner we have another one that is in the living room area but it's old and not as efficient so during summer this was the best room to be so we brought the tv in here but for the rest of the year it actually lives in that middle room um, the storage kind of room which i explained earlier on my recent trip back to australia i brought back a lot of the artworks that i had from melbourne um, i love all of these artworks this is me and panko by louise um, Julia's work, Caitlin's work, another Louise. I've got a portrait of me by um, Jackie down here. I've got my friend Ibom's work. Over here we have um, a work from Hillary. And I really feel like everything that I bring into my home kind of has a story or a memory attached to it. Sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it's just fucking cute. But <laughs> the rest of the time, um, I think like I'm creative. A lot of my friends are creative. I just love having their work around me so I can feel them close. Some of my friends live in Melbourne, some of them in Tokyo, some of them in other parts of the world now. So it's really nice to have a reminder of them around. So coming off of the bedroom, walking back through the living room, you will see I have some fish. Um, they, I won them on the second or third day living in Japan at the summer Matsuri and now they are so big. I think I really underestimated just how big that they were going to grow and I don't know if you know this about me, probably not. I studied photography at university at the Photographic Imaging College for two years and then I did another three years at the Victorian College of Arts. So I have a lot of cameras. This one actually is Yusuke's but the rest are all mine and I've been collecting many photography books. This one I have two of because I'm thinking of selling it on my online store. Um, and then some more over here. And there's a lot of Kure Oji-san merch, which is kind of like something that one of my students who was really naughty called me one day, and it means beautiful old man. And I kind of love that that is my personality assigned to me by this little boy and then I have a few works by this artist I think they are so gorgeous so next to the fish we have our spare room which is a tatami room which is these straw mats which are on the floor that are comfortable for sleeping on I love the smell of this room I cannot get enough um, so I wanted it to be uh, especially for our guests to come and to try sleeping on a futon on the floor it's kind of like a experience that we don't really get in Australia so I thought it would be really nice for people when they come and stay to try these shoji usually go across this window but we've been enjoying um, having a bit more light coming in uh, these plants actually aren't usually in here they're in here because of the typhoon and Yusuke put up this UV plastic over the window so that we one have some privacy and two um, tried to get rid of a lot of the heat that was coming in through this window during the summer of course here is another skateboard and this is where Yusuke does his workout um, in the morning and sometimes at night also this room of course has the futon cupboard so you can store all of your futon and bedding inside here and it's really easy to pull out when you need it so coming back from the spare room this is a beautiful 
bat that I bought. And I guess the last two things to show is the bathroom and then the kitchen. Um, so first you come in and you have like a little wash basin area. Um, it's again really small and compact but it does the trick. Hello again. Um, over here I got this neat little rack, like a shelf from Nitori. It's like in Japan there are so many small spaces but somehow the stores know exactly what kind of small space you have. So there are all these great products for these particular spaces which are really awkward. So I'm keeping everything in here. I have way too much stuff, I know, um, especially for someone who's not that into beauty products. But I keep finding interesting things here and having to try them. And so I put all of our towels up here, the medicine boxes up here, and then extra stuff up here. I know, I know, I have too much stuff, okay? A gal's gotta do what a gal's gotta do. So in here is the shower and bath area. It's a wet room style, but basically like the entire area gets wet and then drains. And we're really lucky because we have these windows. I think a lot of bathrooms in Japan are kind of like a capsule and we don't have a fan. We can open the window and it all naturally dries up. I've got some little pupies and then I love this little guy. I got him when we visited um, Mount Omoro. So we do have one of those baths that can be reheated. So you would put the top on here. First, obviously you would fully shower and get completely clean. So it's not weird reusing the water. Um, but then inside we keep the water. I think Yusuke had a shower this morning. It's still hot actually. You can feel how hot it is. Um, but this stops all of the kind of humidity coming out. Basically, if we hit this one, um, the bathtub water will be reheated and you can choose what temperature. So it's reheating the bath to 40 degrees and the shower is set to 42 degrees. And the shower is at an adjustable height. You can have it low if you're sitting on the ground or you can put it right up if you're wanting to have a standing shower. I actually often will sit on the stool and use the bucket and shower that way. So that's why we have a lot of our shower and soaps on the floor. So coming back out, we'll show you the kitchen. And when I say we'll show you the kitchen, I just mean me. It's just me. So I got this Noren, which is like a um, fabric curtain, um, but we kind of find it a little annoying. Um, but the first thing we have here is our rubbish, which I'll show you the calendar for in a second. And then we have our fridge. Now, originally this um, platform is meant for the washer, but then we didn't have a spot for the fridge to go. So we were like, what the? So we put our washer outside, fortunately, and then we could put the fridge in here. And it's kind of useful actually, because it's a small fridge, it kind of lifts it up a little bit. We have the freezer in the bottom. Um, of course, stocked full of delicious ice creams. I'm gonna eat maybe this one later, or of course the chocolate mochi, some frozen meals, coffee, things like that. And as I said before, I'm a huge fan of gachapon, so I am always I'm happy to collect miniatures of things that I eat. So there's a miniature of the ice cream I just showed you. I love the retro breads that they're bringing out at the moment. This is so cute, it's like squishy. And I love this little guy, he's a little iced puppy. Then inside, nothing too exciting at the moment. Because of the typhoon, we have a really weird mix of stuff in our fridge but I'll show you some things so first up you're probably like what is this it isn't ice but it is like a cooling necklace that was designed by NASA I think it freezes at 24 degrees or something or below so um, it's been a lifesaver this summer I really recommend you getting one if you haven't already then of course we have my film in the fridge because uh, it's way too hot to keep it anywhere else in the house. Of course I have some Yakult, the best drink in Japan arguably. Um, some alcoholic beverages. 
these ones we got like a multi-pack so we can have a try of all different ones and then this one is just like a soda Yusuke explained it's kind of like a cherry soda so I'm excited to try this but mostly I got it because of the cute fucking capybaras on the front then I have some more artwork over here this is a map of touch color so the bins I know you're probably thinking Rochan what the hell who cares about your freaking bins but I thought it was really interesting coming from Australia where we have like three bins tops here we have paper we have um, burnable waste we have plastic we have uncombustible waste or unburnable waste um, then we have a spot for glass and cans and then down the bottom we have pet bottles so this is our garbage calendar so you can see that the only days we don't get rubbish picked up is on Saturday and Sunday and sometimes on a public holiday they don't come but mostly they do on top of the fridge we have our oven if you have an Australian oven don't even tell me about it I miss them so much this is actually a microwave oven you can use the microwave function but it also has a fan and will heat up quite well for cooking things like cakes and cookies and things so over here we have our kitchen space it's actually quite long um, and thin but it's quite big compared to some other people's kitchens and we have the added bonus of having these two windows and the beautiful exhaust so it's very open and spacious um, compared to some people's kitchens in Tokyo of course we needed more storage space though so we added this pole and Yusuke hung these sheets which I thought was a really neat idea to hang a lot of the pots and pans and things that we use every day plus like um, draining things into the sink and the sink isn't too small either and then we have over here our um, gas stove it has a little grill in the bottom too for fish or toast things like that and then we added in all of this other storage space over here. We have this really big rack from Ikea that holds all of our ceramics and food, like a little pantry. And you know what, it's not ideal, but I think it does the job. Where we live isn't necessarily too earthquake prone, but it is a little concerning to imagine all of these things kind of flying around in the event of an earthquake but that's just something that we're gonna have to deal with if it ever happens. I don't think it's something that, you know, we need to worry about right now. And we do have some storage underneath here for like cleaning bags, products, things like that. Um, and then we have a cutlery drawer, of course, too, over here, which I put extra dividers in and things because we only have one drawer. So that is pretty much the extent of my apartment. Actually, my battery died right when I was filming the kitchen, but aside from the balcony, you've seen it all. So please stay updated for my balcony tour, which will happen soon. And if you have any questions about Tachikawa, the apartment or my job in Tokyo, please feel free to ask them and I will do a follow-up video for you. But until then, matane!